Welcome back. It is Friday, at least here at this time. <laughs> this is so stupid. It is Friday. That means it's an FNA Friday. And today we're going to talk about audio. And that means audio clips for your lip sync assignment, how to choose your audio, what to avoid, what's good, what's not good subjectively, where to find your audio and all those common pitfalls and tips and tricks for your audio search. Okay, first, let's go through a couple of things that you should not do. Don't pick an audio file that includes swearing. Don't pick a file that has anything sexual or political or racist. I know this all sounds very obvious. At the same time, some of you might go, why not? Why can't I use this? Well, <laughs> It's inappropriate, it's not nice, depending on the subject, depending on the content. And the overall idea is that besides picking something that is not demeaning and not hurtful, you wanna pick something that also fits where you want to apply to. So you're not gonna find something that has a ton of swearing and just inappropriate stuff, and then send that to a child-friendly company that mainly concentrates on family values and family entertainment. So just like with your demo reel, where you have to research the company and kind of mold your demo reel and your shots towards what they are doing at that company, it's kind of the same thing with the audio file. I would also avoid anything from famous people or famous movies. But the thing is, if you pick someone famous, someone that everybody knows, a voice that everybody knows, and you're gonna watch your shot, people are gonna hear this and go, hmm, that's this actor or this actress, and I'm gonna start comparing your shot and this delivery and those acting choices to this incredible actor or actress, and that's not good. Of of course, you could argue, yeah, but mine is so good that my shot will transcend and be much better than the original. That could be. It's just a tricky thing to do. It's a risky thing to do. Of course, it pays off even better for you. But just in general, I think it's going to fight you and you'd be better off just finding something that is cool. It's original and creative, but not something that everybody knows. Like, you know, like I am your father or blue pill, red pill, or you shall not pass, you know, that, all that stuff. You don't want to pick super famous parts, super famous actors, and super famous movies. At the same time, I also wouldn't pick things from an animated movie or an animated TV show. Just because the source material is already animated, it's already stylized and caricatured, it has gone through that process of taking something and changing it and making it appropriate for that format and for that style. And again, it might just be too famous where people draw comparisons. It is all in all, it's not a good idea. Now, what I would do is pick a file that is clean. And by clean, I mean, if you get it from a DVD, a Blu-ray or online, just make sure there's no like pops and hisses or weird pauses or just something where if you watch the, your shot, you don't go, what? what? I, I, don't get this. Make it as clean and clear as possible. Find a source file or a source, again, disk or whatever your medium of choice is and make sure that you can take it and rip it cleanly. I would also avoid recording yourself unless you are a really good professional voice over artist or, you know, really good with voices. There's something about, especially if you use a bad microphone, like the quality is kind of cheap and the delivery is not, it just, it's just very distracting. You hear this and you go, Wait, was that, was that your mom that recorded this? Was that your brother? And it's just, you can't really concentrate on the animation. So to me, just like with not using famous people or famous movies, I would find something that is really cool that supplements your shot. You can show off your creative skills without having the content be massively distracting. Depending on where you're gonna apply, and I'm just gonna take the States as an example here. I mean, I could be Switzerland, could be France, you know, could do something en français, <laughs> or Schweizerdeutsch. But you know, in this example, uh, if you apply here in the States, I will pick audio that is English so that people understand it and you don't have to do something where you need to put subtitles because then people are gonna look at the subtitles and not look at your animation. You just, you want people to be able to concentrate on your work. That being said, you might have work that's from a different country. You're coming from a different country and that's all you have. Totally understandable, you can use that. I'm just saying if you have the choice, if you have the time to find something and choose something, I will go through what I just said before, make it appropriate and so on and so on, but also in English, then you would use the language that is being used in that country or in uh, that company. I would also use something that has contrast, contrast in delivery, meaning that someone goes through an emotional range where they start off quiet and maybe at the end they yell. It's kind of a cliche thing where it's just a contrast bump. Could be the opposite, could be someone's yelling and then getting very quiet and that could be your contrast there. But I wouldn't pick something where someone goes through like a heist, like I'm a, a plan or some exposition where I'm gonna explain that first you go through door one and then door two is like, 
is boring. Like pick something that is entertaining. And I mean entertaining, it could be really sad, it could be very dramatic, but I think something that has texture and ebbs and flows, ups and downs, something that's just engaging and interesting to listen to. At the same time, you can pick something that's really, really boring if the background or whatever you do around that audio file is much more energetic. There can be contrast in that. A couple of years ago by now, probably years, there was an example of a news commentator or critic or something that was talking to the camera while his kids came into the room and then his wife tried to take the kids out of the room. And it was fantastic. Uh, and what will it mean for... Uh... Um, I would be surprised. Um, pardon me. What is this going to mean for the region? Um, North Korea, North... Now, I was not listening to the audio. To me, it was boring and I was completely focusing on what was going on in the background. It was such a good contrast of him trying to be uh, mm -hmm, the news guy. And then in the background, all this chaos, it was so good. So of course, in anything that I say, they can be an exception, except the things that are inappropriate. <clears throat> but if you have something really boring, then maybe that's on purpose and that's gonna supplement and make the background action that's more energetic, that much more energetic because of contrast. This is not exactly a tip, it is more kind of a pet peeve, but if you have a sound clip and then you add animation either before or after, I would try to find audio that kind of supplements that, preferably from the same source, where there's maybe ambient sound, it be it's something in the streets or in a park or in a restaurant. So it, it doesn't have the audio and the sound and everything, sound effects, and then cut and silence, and then your animation continues. And to me, it's even worse when it's all silence and you watch the animation and suddenly, bam, the sound starts and then your audio clip, your lip sync then starts as well. It's just kind of jarring. And again, if you have the choice, if you have the time to find something, make it more one piece that fits and the whole thing has a nice flow and no distractions, I will go with that. Now, what you could do, again, that's not specifically a tip, those are just suggestions that I will give to my students just to make your shot more interesting. You could find a clip that has pauses. The reason why I like pauses is because with lip sync, you're kind of tied to the rhythm and the delivery to some degree of the source. Any character has to perform and do things and blah, 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 all the lip sync. But when there is a pause, you can take over. And if you go through some of my acting analysis examples, I've had some of those in there that showed, oh, if there's this pause, you can do this. Or if the audio ends, I just did one about Itonia that had exactly that. The audio ends and the character does something behind the character and you can do your own acting thing. But in general, I think that could be really interesting. If you have an audio piece with a pause, that's for you to be either super dramatic and do nothing where you can have crazy acting and then it's just this, whatever it is, like this pause and then it continued for a very specific accent or just for more drama or something more sad or you do something where then suddenly someone starts thinking and changes his or her mind and it's a different delivery or you can completely change the intent or the energy of the shot. One of those examples would be in Midnight Run when you have Robert De Niro just yelling and cursing and he tells the guy on the phone that if you don't do this for me, I'm gonna kill the person right next to me. And at this point, spoiler, in the movie, they're kind of friends. And the guy hearing this goes, wait, what? And you see De Niro talking, goes, no, no. And then continues yelling. So it's one thing that he tells to the person on the phone, but at the same time, we know as an audience, he doesn't really mean it. And again, that, like a pause in your audio clip gives room for that change, for your extra creativity in your performance. If you have an audio piece with one character talking, you can still add a second character in there. You could just have a classic over the shoulder where you just kind of blurred out, you see part of the head and then kind of the shoulder, and that person is talking to that person, and maybe the other, you know, silhouetted head can kind of move a bit or react, but you can kind of imply a second character and then have a relationship between the two and maybe your acting will be different because of that. Maybe a character gets closer to the other character and then so on. So you have that spatial relationship that's just there because of the other character that's technically not fully animated. And I think that could also be a bit more interesting in terms of, again, contrast and relationship and just visual composition. Instead of having a character that's kind of in an empty room, just performing to an empty room or not to the camera, but it's kind of off camera. It just kind of, it looks like a test. And sometimes, at least to me, it's more interesting to see a character interact with another character or interact with an environment or just aware of the environment or what's around him or her. Just because it's just rare that in a movie you're gonna animate something where someone says something alone in an empty room, unless you're in the Matrix where you go, you know, there, his Neo is listening to, to Morpheus and you got that, that specific empty room. Of course, there are always exceptions, but in general, I think 
If you're already practicing animation and you're practicing performance, I would also go a step further and at the same time practice how is this character reacting to another character or to another character in an environment or doing something like secondary action while performing the audio delivery and so on and so on. Now, what you could also do, which I don't see that often in animation, and it's a bit tricky because it relies on the person watching your reel having the audio on to some degree. By that I mean is, what if you have an audio piece, and this could be one character talking or two, whatever it is, but the character you're animating is not talking. The person you're animating is listening to whatever is being said. Now, if the audio is off, there might be a thing where if you're watching, it's like, I don't get it. I don't know why is this person doing this. And I don't know if you want to have a sign at the beginning of the reel saying there is audio. I mean, I guess which you could. So it's a bit of a risky thing. I'm not sure if I want to do, do this 100%. But I think it could be interesting just because you're going to animate thought process, meaning the character hears something and is then deconstructing that new information, processing it, and then having different reactions to what he or she is hearing. And I think that could be really cool to animate. Also, if you've never done lip sync, it wouldn't be too challenging, not too challenging, but it wouldn't be overwhelming where you have too much to do. You can kind of practice just pantomime and thought process while having something else than another object or something that the character can react to. So it's not just another person or whatever, vehicle, an object, or a monkey, I don't know, like a creature, but it is something where a character is really listening to something. I think that could be really interesting to me. I like that stuff, but again, it's not like a 100% recommendation. It comes with the caveat that if you don't have the audio on, that maybe your shot could be confusing. Now, you also don't have to use audio where someone talks. I know that sounds really weird, but you can also pick audio where someone just has heavy breathing, some grunting or sound effects or someone struggling for a fight or climbing up there or sliding down or something a bit more physical or someone just going, hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. Just stuff like that, inhales and hums or whatever it is. It doesn't always have to be full audio in terms of spoken words. So you can always kind of take smaller steps towards audio and go with listening and then just kind of pretending or just saying one or two words. It doesn't have to be a full on 10, 20, 30 second audio clip. Now, if it is long, then you can potentially think about breaking up your shots into different shots meaning you make a sequence out of it. So you could have your first shot be kind of an establishing shot. You see one or two characters and they're talking, but then you cut to a close up and then to the other characters close up. So you can show off different skills. You can show full body mechanics, pantomime with audio delivery and lipstick and all that good stuff. But then you cut to a closer thing for maybe the more emotional moments or something more dramatic or subtle. And then you can show off that in that close up. Cause you don't want to do a full body with your character, you know, that's your frame and your character is this big and go full on subtle with with your expressions and you know lip shapes and everything because it's too far away so you want to pick and choose so don't take a fantastic awesome subtle or just whatever fantastic audio clip and put that over a full body mechanic shot where the character is this small jumping around i mean i guess you could and there's always something awesome someone's going to potentially comment and say, well, I found this and it's gonna be awesome. Sure, there's always an exception. I'm just saying, be mindful of what you're using and when and how and so on and so on. Another example would be if you're doing pantomime and full body mechanics and you wanna just kind of start off with lip sync, just going back to the previous example, you can start with someone opening a door and running in and it's full body and it's what's going on and then runs towards camera and goes, where are they, where are they? And then that's it, where you have short amount of audio. It's not too much lip sync, but you can start practicing. But it's mostly body mechanics, mostly pantomime. But again, you're using depth of the scene. Someone comes in, full body stuff, pushing a door, and then getting closer for more facial acting, more subtle stuff or more exaggerated stuff. But so you don't go straight from, I did the weight lift and I'm doing a 20 second dialogue piece. I think you wanna go gradual. And like, you know, I said in the previous FNA, you don't wanna take on too much. You wanna push yourself for sure, but you don't wanna take on too much and then be completely overwhelmed. With all that being said, you might ask, well, where do I find audio pieces that would work for just everything you said? It's a good question. There's a lot of stuff online. So you can, for instance, take radio plays. There's some radio plays online where it's not gonna be that known and it's all through audio performance. There's nothing visual that's connected with that. That could be something. You could use the 11 second club. And I said you could just because it's a good side. You have the monthly deadlines, which is good. The flip side of that is that if you pick this audio piece, there are a ton of other people that have picked it as well. If you put this on your reel, the recruiter or whoever's gonna watch your reel might go again, really? I don't wanna hear this again. So 
it's kind of it might be too overused and probably not the best idea at the same time you could argue well if mine's really really good it's going to stand out because people are going to go i've heard this 50 times 50,000 times and then suddenly go oh that was really good. That was a really good creative new take on something I've heard forever. And that might give you a better chance to get hired. Or I don't know, you might stand out better. Who knows? Again, it's something like animating the character that just listens to something. It's interesting to me, but it's potentially risky. So 11 Second Club, they're a good example. There's a lot of great stuff out there. At the same time, it could be too overused. I'll also put some links in the description of audio websites that have just audio. There are some movie clips, websites, trailers, or specific moments from movies where you can just rip the audio. And if you have any other examples that are not listed here, feel free to comment, I would love it. And if you have any other questions or concerns, whatever it is, leave me a comment, that would be fantastic. If you like this, give this a like. As always, subscribe and hit the bell button if you wanna get all the updates. And if you listen to everything until the very end, thank you so much for all your time, I appreciate it. And I will see you next week for the next FNA.